welcome back to another episode of In-Depth. My name is Luke Hardacre and I'm a surf coach at Ombi. If you're new to Ombi, we take a look at surfing from the perspective of ocean, mind, body and equipment. This podcast is all about straight to the point tips, things that you can take away, implement into your surfing or things that change the way you view your surfing. So, like I often do, I'm going to start this episode with a question, and that is, do you feel like your turns are running short? Do they just feel a bit weak, or you just aren't wrapping them around? Or are you looking to work on your turns, or work to turn your longboard? This usually happens when people are cutting their, sh- their turns short. This feeling of there's more to turn, and it just doesn't feel right, but you aren't sure what the issue is. It's frustrating, but there are some easy ways to fix it. And this is for short boards, mid lengths, long boards. This is fundamentals for turning. Here's why you might be cutting your turns short. And there are three main reasons for the average surfer when they're struggling to complete their turns. When I say complete, I don't mean right out of it. I mean they're doing a quarter or half turn instead of a full turn. And that is not following through on the turn, you're afraid of getting stuck behind the whitewash, or you're racing ahead in search of the next section. So then, how to follow through on your turns? This is all part about technique, and you need to make sure to look through the turn and not at your spray, as well as opening up the front shoulder to continue that twist, to continue the turn. Both of these are insanely common in the average surfer, you can go down to the beach and in 10 or so minutes, you're gonna see this happen. So then what does it mean to follow through and look through the turn? If you can't see where you want to go, you're never gonna get there. The first step is always to look through your turn to where you wanna go. This isn't instant. It's not snapping your neck to look where you wanna go. As you initiate the turn, you begin by looking where you want to go and you scan through the turn. What this means is that you're twisting and continuing to twist, looking for the place you're aiming for. Think of turning around to find out where the noise is coming from when someone calls out your name. You're looking through the turn and continue to look for where that place is. This will continue to extend the turn for as long as you keep looking and scanning through that turn. When you finally lock your eyes on that place, your body knows what to do and will subconsciously pull you out of that turn and direct your body and the board to that place. So here's a drill for how to look through the turns and follow through. So if you've got a surf skateboard or regular skateboard or anything that turns that you can ride and you can do it outside of the surf where you can take away the pressure to understand this concept, just find space wherever and find objects or spots around you that you can easily identify to use in the drill. Get a push start and build some speed. And then just initiate a turn. And you're going to now look through the turn until you find and see the desired location or object. You're basically calling out where you wanna go and you keep changing it. And you do that by keep looking at new objects. You wanna keep mixing this up and changing what you look at or the turn you do. You'll feel the skateboard to continue to turn until you find that spot, and then it becomes like a magnet. Your gaze will draw you to that spot. You can also equally keep turning on the spot, but never setting a location to end up or turn towards one place, and as you get close to it, continue to look through the turn for a new identifier, and it just keeps going. Play with this, it's a lot of fun, and it's gonna improve your hand-eye coordination immensely and teach you how Where you're looking is always where you're going. Another way that you can think of this following through and looking where you're going is take it to golf. When you swing a club, you want to look where the ball is going. You follow through with your swing and your head looking in the direction you want to hit the ball. If you stop and look at the ball, you're going to stop your swing. And this is the same thing in surfing. And this also links us to the next part, which is stop looking at your spray. This is full ego, and we always know not to do it, 
yet we do it. We want to see how the turn looks, and yet, if you look at the spray of the section, you're going to stop that turn dead in its track, and you're going to probably fall off, or it's going to look really awkward. From here, it's just a quarter or a half turn, and it's going to look and feel horrible. You know it when you do it, and it pains us. If you want to follow through the turn and throw more spay, spray, it's all about how much rail you bury and how long you hold that turn. Power is an illusion. The longer you hold that turn, the more spray you're going to throw. Turns are drawn out, held, and long maneuvers. None of it happens instantly. This is the same for longboarding, shortboarding. It's just adjusting to suit the turning circle of that board. This next part of following through your turn sounds silly, but you're going to be surprised how many people don't do it. And again, if you go down to the beach, you're going to see it. Doing a turn is not a held movement. It's a movement. It's not static. This means you're moving during it, not just the board and positioning. I'm talking about your body. So this means your turn is a progressive movement that flows. It will start and flow at different rates of movement based on what you're doing. Think of the backside snap. This has an explosive middle part with a follow through being very gradual movement after that. Whereas a cutback is more of a steady flow of movement until you rebound off the foam. It's not get into the position and then hold it. You want your movement to flow with the turn. The final piece to following through with your turns it's getting out of your own way so you can complete the turn. Your front shoulder is going to block you from twisting beyond it. If it's rolled forward or your front arm is in front of you, it's going to block the twist. So I've got a drill for you. It's how to teach you to unlock the shoulder. So I want you to find your neutral stance and get in a position to try mimic a turn. Your front arm is going to wrap around your belly. Then I want you to try and twist and look through the turn. You'll find that you can't turn very far and it feels weird. Now I want you to do this again, except just put your front arm somewhere comfortable in front of you. You will feel better, but still a bit off. You'll have rotated further as the front shoulder is not as locked as it was before. Now again, I want you to do this again, but this time you want the palm of your front arm facing upwards. And this is gonna roll your shoulder backwards. This is going to create the space you need to twist. This is going to feel so much better and the rotation you can get will be so much better. Rotating the palm isn't foolproof though, as you can still forcibly roll the shoulder inwards. And this can happen if you're tense and self-protecting subconsciously. This is where the raising the front arm up with the palm facing forwards as if you're waving hell, hello to someone or touching your face will ensure that shoulders open up. It is then near impossible to stuff it up and roll the shoulder forwards to lock the turn. It's an amazing pattern interrupter if you're locking up your turns by locking the front shoulder. This next part is not a technical issue. It's either what's happening behind you or what's in front of you. And a lot of surfers are afraid to get stuck behind the whitewash. So much so that it'll make them steer clear of the pocket and safety surf. They are then looking ahead to the next section that hasn't formed yet to say, I don't want to miss that, so I'll give up on the section I'm on now. It's madness, right? You want to be in the pocket, but avoid it for the fear of trying and maybe getting stuck behind the foam. And or you see something in front of you, so you just give up on the section you're on for the one that is far worse. And you're probably already way ahead of the pocket, so now you have heaps of space to fit in a turn without getting stuck behind the whitewash. It's absolute madness. The trick here is to not care. Let all that go and just do a turn. If you're here, it's because you're already routinely, you aren't completing your turns. So let's start by trying to complete at least one instead of four quarter turns. If this is you and your problem. You need to be aware of this and come up with a trigger word or pattern interrupter to get out of this habit. Forget about anything else, no pressure, no expectations. The goal is to learn and try. Even better if it's to hit the foam. 
You want to do a turn with the goal of extending it as far as you can keep going until you see the pocket and then go to it, to rebound off it. You need to start wasting waves to learn this and get the feel. Learn to feel a full turn by attempting them, not by perfecting half turns or worrying about what's ahead of you. The best section to do a turn on is either behind you because you've raced ahead of the wave or you're near the pocket and it's right there. Oh, and closeouts, when they're in front of you, they are amazing. Go for it. Just do it. It's a section. You've been looking for one. No excuses. Just go. Don't kick out of the wave. Nothing to lose. Everything to gain. So in summary, this regard, this, ugh. So in summary, this is going to work regardless of what you're riding or the type of surfing. It's the same principles. Just a longboard will turn slower or there's a variation in technique to how that twist works. Follow through your turns by looking through them, scanning for where you want to go. Open up the front shoulder to get out of your own way and allow the twist to continue further. Don't look at your spray. You're going to turn that turn into a very short quarter turn. Power is an illusion, and you'll throw more spray by holding the turn for longer. Move through the turn. Don't just hold a pose. It's not a yoga holding pose session. Think of it as movement. And start wasting waves and having a go. Try to do a full turn, and forget about the rest of the wave if you want to start learning how to finish them. Find success in doing a full turn, not coming out of it. Success isn't guaranteed by finishing a turn. That's the whole point. We want to do a full turn, not a quarter turn, not a half turn. Celebrate the small wins and seeing progress and wrapping your turns around further and don't set the expectations that you have to ride out. Just find the ways to make it happen and work from there. So has this helped you understand how to finish your turns? Is this something you struggle with? And are you going to try and break the bad habit? I'd love to know. You can reach out anytime, either through the app, you can message me, or you can send me an email at info at ombi.co. If you'd like to download the app, it's completely free. You'll find the links in the show notes below. If you want to improve your surfing, you can start a 14 day free trial anytime links in the show notes below that'll give you instant access to all of our training it'll give you access to our beginner and intermediate structured training follow along programs there are six and 12 sessions respectively this goes through everything you need to know to break bad habits and to help improve your surfing and then every month we launch a new maneuver where we do a deep dive of structured training and we give drills for beginners intermediates and advanced surfers to work on that one aspect and if you're still not sure of where to start and you want to know a bit more about Ombi, you can do the Ombi method. It's a complete free training program. The link is in the show notes below. And that'll explain the whole learning process. It'll give you things to work on in your surfing. And it'll go through this whole understanding of where you're at and what you can do to help improve your surfing. Until then, next week, I'm going to dive into some surf skating. I'm going to give you a ton of drills. So for people who've been holding off, they're still working on the land. They don't know which surf skate to get, things like this. And they want to get into a bowl and understand more about surf skating. That's going to be that whole episode next week. It's also going to give you our preferences on what surf skate to get and use. So until then, I'll see you next time.